website that uh, went into this in quite in depth he states you know that he doesn't know if everything he's saying is right he's just trying to find the truth about this so I, I found some interesting things on here I took some screenshots from there I'm gonna read this part here this week we're going to talk about the star of Rimfan which I believe is the six-pointed star also known as a hexagram and also known as the star of David the star of Rimfan is mentioned in scripture in the book of Amos and in book the book of Acts in Acts 7, Stephen is trying to reason with the Sanhedrin just before they stone him to death. In this passage, he recounts the famous golden calf incident that took place in the book of Exodus when the Israelites arrived at the base of Mount Sinai. As Moses ascended the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, the people became impatient and reverted back to the ways of their Egyptian masters. Acts 7:41, And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yeah, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. There are several words we need to clarify. Host of heaven equals strata equals heavenly bodies, stars in heaven. Star equals astron equals constellation. Rimfan from Strong's G4481, Ralphan, designation for Saturn. Now, this is something I just learned today. I knew that scripture well. I've used it many times and, and in the same context he has as, as uh, Solomon's seal. And what I, the information that I had come up with that was that there's a difference in Solomon's seal and the Star of David. Uh, that Israel has on their flag. The hexagram is always shown within a circle. The Star of David on the Israeli flag is without a circle. Um, then Amos 5.26, But you have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Shein, your images, the star of your God, which you made yourselves. These two words, oh, uh, a Shion, Strong's H3594, Kiwan, this is really small on my phone, an image or a pillar, a statue dedicated to the Assyrian Babylonian god of the planet Saturn, corresponding to Baal Peor, Shin. These two words, Rimfan and Shin, clearly demonstrate that the Is Israelites were worshiping the stars, specifically the planet Saturn, which they likely learned from their Egyptian predecessors. According to the book of Enoch, astrology was introduced to humanity by the fallen angels of Genesis 6 and continued after the flood. There's a lot of other things I could insert here, but 
I'm not going to right now. Might talk about it later. In ancient times, planets were known as wandering stars because they moved across the night sky. History has shown that other planets were worshipped as well, including Venus, Mercury, Mars, and Jupiter. But there seems to be a particular emphasis on Saturn. I'd never heard anything about Saturn worship or anything other than what I've learned, you know, from Greeks and uh, Egypt and stuff where they different uh, planets were, you know, named after different things. But uh, I'd never heard about, you know, Saturn. To me, it was just one of the, the ten planets. And uh, so I'd never thought of it, about it as being <laughs> inferring to Satan. And uh, like I said, I've, I've done a lot of really deep study into ancient Samaria, which was the first civilization here on Earth. And that we know of um, and things changed as time went along but like I said that's another subject so my main thing that I got from this right here my needle in the haystack is that rim fan is a designation for Saturn so so they made an image of the star of their God we know in the Exodus account that they made a golden calf a male bull the bull has been a prominent figure in astrology dating back to Babylon where it was a symbol of King Nimrod. From there, bull cult worship migrated to other nations like Egypt. This tradition has continued in different religions today, such as in India, where cows are still considered sacred. We also see this manifest today through the constellation Taurus, which is symbolized by the bull. The bull was also a symbol for Moloch or Baal. The word Shion means pillar, so there was likely a pillar involved. So, because of my study of ancient Egypt, of Samaria, I do know that Marduk, one of the Anunnaki gods, was a real pistol. He was a real troublemaker, and he is the one that eventually became the ruler of Babylon. He's the one that tried to build the Tower of Babel. Basically, the tower was so he could, they could reach into heaven. It was actually a launch pad. That's I know that sound, might sound crazy to some of you, but that's... He wanted to have control over the spaceport, and that was uh, so he could uh, reach outer space. You can see here the the um, bull on top of the pillar, They're dancing around the golden calf. Moses comes down, and gets mad when he sees it. They have their tabernacles there. A tabernacle is, is like a tent. Um, it's a temporary dwelling place is what a tabernacle means. And then there shows another. And there you can see uh, on these two here, you can see the, the bull has some kind of a round thing on top of its head. So could that be, you know, Saturn? It's a possibility. I never thought about it that way. I've seen those before, but... And there's another one that shows the, the golden calf with the planetary thing on top of it. This part here shows it's a depiction of the Babylonians sacrificing a child to Moloch. Out of the Ammonites, Babylonians, and Phoenicians, Canaanites, to which human victims, particularly young children, were offered in sacrifice. Moloch's image was a hollow brazen bull with a door in one side. The condemned were placed inside and a red hot fire was lit underneath and the victims were roasted to death. Kind of macabre. So, most of you have seen this one. Um, in Psalms 106, they did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them, but mingled with the nations and imitated their ways. They served their idols and were ensnared by them they sacrificed to demons their own sons and daughters shedding innocent blood the blood of their own sons and daughters whom they sacrificed to the idols of canaan desecrating the land with bloodshed they defiled themselves by their actions became adulterers by their conduct so the lord grew angry with his people abhorred his own heritage he handed them over to the nations and their adversaries ruled over them their enemies oppressed them kept them under subjection many times did he rescue them but they kept rebelling and scheming and were brought low by their own guilt. This is the Minotaur. 
he was talking about it being a, you know, like the bull. These practices can be traced back to the Canaanites, back to ancient Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar throwing men in the fire. The metallurgy used to make the brazen bulls dates back to the Canaanites before the flood, Kenites. Tubal Cain come from the tribe of Smiths and was the first to invent metallurgy and the engraving tools used to fashion idols. And it goes down the star of Renfan Saturn and it shows some of the... Uh, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that this star was the hexagram. The hexagram is one of the most prominent symbols and throughout history it can be found in many cultures. It's an equilateral six-pointed star with six sides and six mini triangles. Each internal angle is 60 degrees. The most interesting thing about it is that it functions as a mathematical, geometric, and symbolic representation of 666, which is the number of the beast. Revelations 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six. So this one shows a cube, which any way you count it, it has, it's like six across, six on each side, six up and down, all the way around. So it's lots of sixes there. And then this is uh, 60 degrees plus 60 degrees plus 60 degrees equals 180 times two triangles equals 360, and so on and so forth. Six points, six mini triangles, six sided polygon. There is much evidence to suggest that the star of Rimfran in scripture was in reference to the planet Saturn and over time the hexagram was chosen as its symbol. Today as we see the hexagram being used as a talisman in ceremonial and occult magic for centuries and is referred to as the talisman of Saturn. A talisman is a magical object, idol such as an amulet which is cut and engraved under certain observances. In medieval times a talisman would feature symbols in relation to planets which were frequently used in divination, alchemy and astrology. Below is an illustration of a talisman of Saturn. Notice the similarities with the star of Rimfran mentioned in scripture. It involves bull worship. It involves the zodiac astrology. It includes Saturn Washington worship, and it has a hexagram. So there's the talisman of Saturn. And I'd like to mention here too that before Marduk in Babylon, the Anunnaki used astronomy. They they were scientists. They did, you know, the study of the stars and the planets and stuff. But when Marduk took over in Babylon, he changed that to astrology and the worship of planets and the stars. Uh, the original Anunnaki actually believed in the great creator God of the universe. I'm just going to leave this here for a minute. You can read it if, if you want. If I can see something here, I want to read my... Boys get getting a little bit cranky. See, and I had read this too, that they didn't use the Star of David. It was not the of Jewish origin. They used the menorah, the seven golden candlesticks. Oh, that's interesting. So why did the six-pointed star become known as the Jewish star? This symbol was widely adopted, not because the Jewish people chose it, but ironically because Adolf Hitler forced all Jews to wear a yellow six-pointed star during the Holocaust. The word Holocaust means burnt offering and the six-pointed star was used in the past when burnt human sacrifices were offered to Moloch and Ashtoreth in Baal worship. Hmm, that's interesting. The few Jews who had anything to do with the six-pointed star or the hexagram were those who were involved in occult practices Back to Hitler, would he put anything good on a Jew? Hitler meant to insult and destroy the Jews, and being wrapped up in the occult, read the book, The Nazis and the Occult, he may have meant the Jews to be his burnt offering for power. Today, most Jews wear this star by choice, and without thinking or checking out its origin and usage through time. Wearing the six-pointed star has become a fashion. Hmm. The first mention of the six-pointed star in Israelite literature was in Amos 5.25. When Yahweh angrily tells his people that, I hate and despise your feast days, you shall take up 
Siketh, your king, and Shion, your images, the star of your god. Siketh, Seketh, the Chion, Kaiwan, means star and refers to the star Saturn. And was objects of idolatrous idol, 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 worship, as they were considered to be Assyrian gods. The mixed multitude that went out of Egypt with the children of Israel took the star with them. Like the obelisk, the six-pointed star was an Egyptian idol used in idolatrous worship. When Solomon married the daughter of Pharaoh, he became involved in Egyptian idol worship and went into magic and witchcraft. That's true. Solomon built an altar to Ashtoreth and Moloch. Even after God threatened him to rend the kingdom of Israel from his son's hand, and indeed the split occurred after Solomon's death. Solomon's idolatry caused the kingdom of Israel to be split in two. It was Josiah who later destroyed this forbidden altar. Did you know that the number 666 was connected to Solomon? Yes, 666 talents of gold was sent to Solomon each month by none other than the king of Tyrus. And I believe that king of Tyrus was Marduk. Because he fits every description of the king of Tyrus. After you have read this account in the book of 1 Kings, turn to Ezekiel chapter 28. Oh, what a tangled web we weaved when Solomon practiced to deceive. Hmm. Solomon also laid down the foundations of the craft, which later became known as Freemasonry, and the six-pointed star features prominently in Masonic rituals today. My little puppies are thinking they're big dogs today. These are Masonic uh, temples. So why is the six-pointed star hexagram associated with the planet Saturn? because there is a large hexagon cloud pattern sitting at Saturn's North Pole. This colorful view from NASA's Cassini mission is the highest resolution view of the unique six-sided jet stream at Saturn's North Pole, known as the hexagon. There is a massive hurricane tightly centered on the North Pole, with an eye about 50 times larger than the average hurricane eye on Earth. The sides of the hexagon are about 9,000 miles long, which is more than the diameter of the Earth. The radio emissions, what? The hexagon has a jet stream made of atmospheric gases moving at 200 miles per hour. It rotates with a period of 10 hours, 39 minutes, 24 seconds, the same period as Saturn's radio emissions from its interior. The hexagon does not shift its longitude like other clouds in the visible atmosphere. And as you can see, um, you can see the cube, you know, inside the circle, how it fits, because it turns into a hexagon called a mega, Megatron. And you can see that, see there it fits as a cube and it has six sides. And there it is in the, the middle of the star, sorry. You can see the cube. You can see it faintly on there and how it all fits. see the black cube of Saturn all over the world in different areas. Um, kind of blurry. I can't read. I can't read the names on there. Saturn Death Cult. 
cult of the black cube. And that that's the same thing that's on top of the uh, those funny little hats they wear. Looks like an eye. You can pause that and read it if you want. A major religious festival is the Roman calendar of Saturnalia. Celebrated the harvest and sowing and read from December 17th through the 23rd. During Saturnalia, the social restrictions of Rome were relaxed. An interpretation of the Saturnalia is a vegetable festival of light leading to the winter solstice, the renewal of light, and the coming of the new year was celebrated in the later Roman Empire, the birthday of the unconquerable sun on December 25th. Hmm. Interesting. Well, most of us know that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. We know that it's a, it's a pagan holiday that we, we, we are to live in the world, be in the world, but not of it, Jesus said. You have to obey the laws that you can. You have to stand up against the ones you can't. History reveals that Saturn worship was taking place in Egypt. From there, we see the Hebrews started worshiping Saturn at Mount Sinai. The Greeks worshiped the planet Saturn, known to them as Cronus. And eventually the Roman Empire also worshipped the planet Saturn and held an annual festival of Saturnalia. They even named Saturday after Saturn. So it is that so is it that big of a surprise if we still have occult groups today worshipping the planet Saturn? But who? Secret societies like the Masons and the Jewish and Islamic mysticism, occultism, and those studying the Kabbalah. Kaaba or Kaaba, Islam, a cube-shaped building in Mecca, the most sacred Muslim pilgrim shrine into which is built the black stone believed to have been given to Gabriel to, by Gabriel to Abraham. Muslims turn in its direction when praying five times per day, from Arabic to Kaaba, from Kaaba cube. Islamic tradition holds that it fell from heaven as a guide for Adam and Eve to build an altar. It has often been described as a meteorite. Muslims are to go around the Kaaba seven times in a counterclockwise direction. The circling is believed to demonstrate the unity of the believers in the worship of the one God as they move in harmony together around the Kaaba. Yeah, it looks familiar. KabbalahExposed.com, the cube is built to the dimension of six, which is the number of binding, of uh, bringing down of astral energies into the material realm. The cube also represents the six-pointed star, which is the symbol of Judaism. Within the occult, we see a connection between Islam, the Torah, and Kabbalah. This is what the Tefillin, the black box the Jews wear on their head, relates to. It contains the Shema prayer, which is a formula arranged with the Hebrew alphabet, which is a series of charged yantras that ties into their energy matrix. The Shema sequence is what unites them with their yantras that ties into their energy. Oh. The Shema sequence is what unites the Jew with their God in Judaism. This unites them and connects them into the energy matrix, which is the cube. The Teflon acts like an antenna that draws down a powerful spiritual force from these seven dimensions. Ooh, that kind of sounds like those seven ascended masters or the seven, you know, rays of light that General Flynn talked about. The 
Teflon acts like an oh. Here's what Kabbalist Jews have said regarding the connection to the cube of Mecca. According to both Kabbalah and Islam, there are seven heavens or seven dimensions in the spiritual world that directly influence our world. That's why there are seven notes of music, seven seas, seven continents, and seven days in the week. The Zohar explains this in the secret behind Abraham binding his son Isaac. Each of us are required to sacrifice our ego for the sake of sharing with others. Ninety-nine percent of Jews have no clue that this is why we bind Teflon on our left arm. All this stuff right here is what Jesus came to set us free from. talking about some science fiction movie boards and they rode around in space in a big black cube this is what you get when you make God in your own image instead of God that Jesus came to introduce us to. D-Wave Quantum Computer Anthony Patch, Jordy Rose, an altar to an alien god connected to the Mandela Effect and Mandela Portals. He discussed the quantum computer may be able to achieve artificial intelligence and become sentient. It's not a coincidence that organizations like CERN, NASA, Lockheed Martin and DARPA, I'm adding that one, have purchased these systems. DARPA probably made it. As you can see, you know, these, when the Star of David or the Seal of Solomon is in a circle, then it's a hexagram. And this goes into Kabbalism. And I don't even like mentioning this fact, but Jared Kushner and Ivanka are Kabbalists. When she got the vaccine, she had the red string, Kabbalah string on her wrist for protection. That's the, the Kabbalah symbols. Kabbalah incorporates Eastern mysticism and transcendental meditation to help awaken the Kundalini serpent, which travels up the seven chakras of the spine. Until the Kundalini awakening is achieved and hypnosis with the spiritual realm is obtained, it's a very dangerous practice. I have some stories to tell about that. Hexagram is a prominent symbol in Rosicrucian and Hermetic magic which was used by infamous satanic, satan, Satanist Aleister Crowley. Key of Solomon also known as the Book of Spells.
Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to link to this uh, person. I think this video came from January 26, 2020. And uh, get some helpful information. Doesn't mean he's right about everything. Doesn't mean I'm right about everything. This is something new for me. I've never really gotten into this, but I will say that my study of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Hebrews, and Greeks have helped me put a little more logical spin on this. Have a good day. Satan I was not familiar with so I thought I would look into it this is the ancient Hebrew research center definition of Hebrew names um, Satan the Hebrew word Satan itself means adversary as one who stands against another as seen in Kings and the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of the royal house in Edom. At other times, his name is translated as a proper name, such as in the book of Job. Job 1, 6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. I have a real good idea who Satan was right there, but I'm not going to even get into that right now because it's a deep subject. The Hebrew for Satan is Hasatan. The prefix Ha means the, so the Satan, which identifies the noun Satan is a noun and not a proper name and should therefore be translated as the adversary. So Ha Satan is the adversary. However, there is one verse where the word Satan could be translated as a proper name. Chronicles 21.1, Satan stood up against Israel and incited David to number Israel. In this verse, the word Satan does not include the prefix Ha or the and could be translated as a proper name. But upon further investigation, we find that this verse is also recorded in 2 Samuel 24, 1, where the adversary is identified as Yahweh. So Yahweh was the Satan, was Satan. Yahweh was the adversary. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go number Israel and Judah. So it was Yahweh. How about that?
For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them in mercy, and upon the Israel of God. To the only God, our Savior, and to Jesus Christ, our Lord.
the darkness where everything is unknown. I face the power of sin on my own. I did not know of a place I could go where I could find a way to heal my wounded soul. He said that I could come into his presence without fear Into the holy place where his mercy hovers dear I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy seat Where Jesus is calling He said his grace would cover me His blood would flow freely It will provide the healing
Blessings of Abraham are mine So fine
the awful place before the Lord was not a land. He bound his only son, and as the knife was raised, a sacrifice became the price of praise. When praise demands a sacrifice, I'll worship even them, surrendering the dearest things in life. And if devotion costs me all, you'll find me faithful to His call. When praise demands a sacrifice. To go to Calvary had come to God's own Son, where an altar waited for the Lamb He would become. His hands reached up to heaven as the cross was raised, and with His life. 